So this is the new Marshmallow DIY Phantom. It's a Phantom powered contact mic preamp and you can pick this up on my website. And this is different from the original Marshmallow DIY which needs to be powered externally, say with a battery. This new one is Phantom powered, meaning that it can be powered directly from your recording interface. And if you buy this, it comes in this little kit. And today I want to show you what all these parts are for and how to assemble them. And to start with, there's this little row of pins and I'm just going to solder this to the board. Although you might not even necessarily need this, you could just freeform solder everything else to the board. And then there's also this terminal block, which I'll solder onto the other side of the board. And then I'm just going to plug this into a breadboard just so I can temporarily attach things to it. So now I'll tell you what it is that you need to attach to each one of these pins, starting with these two pins labeled P plus and P minus. And that's where you're supposed to connect a piezo disc. And this little one comes in the kit. And by convention, you would plug the red wire into P plus and the black wire into P minus. Although it doesn't really matter which way around you do it. And the two questions I've been asked a lot about this is first of all, does the disc need to be close to the preamp board? And the answer is no, you could just as well put the piezo disc at the far end of a long cable. And in fact, I might recommend using a mic cable for this. And you would connect the piezo disc to the two inner conductors of the cable. And regardless of whether or not you're using a long cable, to reduce hum, you're going to need to shield the disc by insulating it with tape and then wrapping it up in metal and connecting it to ground, which you could do here by connecting the cable shield to the ground pin on the preamp board and then clipping the other end of the cable shield to this aluminum foil. And the other question I've been getting asked is whether you can attach several piezo discs to a single preamp. And the answer to that is yes, that actually works really well. And that could be useful, for example, if you're trying to get even coverage of a large instrument. And if you're interested in that, I've written a whole blog post with graphs and audio examples, and that's on my website. And I also have spare discs for sale, just in case you want more than the one that comes in the kit. Okay, so the next two pins here are both labeled gain. And in the kit, there's this potentiometer. And it's these two pins of the potentiometer that need to connect to these two gain pins. And it doesn't really matter which way around you connect them. And I've soldered a couple of wires on this one just to make it easier to put into the breadboard. And then this is going to allow you to adjust the gain or the sensitivity of the microphone. Alternatively, if you don't need or want to be able to adjust the gain of the microphone, like if you just want fixed gain, you can just put a resistor between these two pins. And just for posterity, this is the gain equation. And here's a handy table of resistor values. And if you're doing that, I've also left this little solder pad exposed on the board. And rather than putting a resistor between the two gain pins, you could solder a little chip resistor across these pads. And then you wouldn't need any additional external resistor. Okay, so moving to the other side of the board, there's this blue terminal block. And this is the audio output of this preamplifier. And somehow or another, you need to connect this into your audio recording interface. And I have not included anything in the kit for that, because what you need is going to depend on exactly what you're trying to do. And so probably the simplest thing you could do would be just to cut one end off of a microphone cable. And if you do that, you'll see that there are three separate conductors in there. And one of those conductors is this braided shield that goes around the outside of the cable. And you should debraid that a little bit and then connect that into the middle position of this terminal block. And then the other two conductors that are in here, it probably doesn't really matter which way around you connect these. But if you look in the other end of this cable in the connector, you'll see that the pins in there are labeled. One is the shield. And then these other two conductors are two and three. And as a matter of best practice, those should be connected to the positions labeled XLR2 and XLR3 on the preamp board, respectively. And you should still be able to read the two and the three on the board, even with the terminal block on there, which was not the case in my original prototype. You see how much effort I put into these things for you guys? Anyway, so those two conductors then just screw into the terminal block. 
And even though this microphone cable doesn't come in the kit, I am now selling these Switchcraft connectors on my website, and I'm also selling microphone cable by the foot, if that helps. And then I'm also selling a panel mount version of this connector. And that might be useful, for example, if you plan on permanently embedding a contact mic in a musical instrument. This way you could just put the whole microphone and preamp down inside of the instrument, and then you would somehow mount this connector into the side of your instrument. And then you would just need to attach short wires from this connector to the preamp. And again, the pins on this connector are labeled one, two, and three. But that would give you a fully self-contained instrument, and then you could externally attach a microphone cable to it. So the other thing that comes in the kit are these little standoffs. And these are supposed to help you mount the board to the inside of a housing or instrument or whatever you're gonna put this in. So these just screw into the mounting holes on the board. And then you could mount this down by screwing it in from underneath. Alternatively, you could put the standoffs on the other way around and then screw them down this way. But that should give you a pretty nice little form factor. And ideally, to reduce hum, this whole thing should be enclosed in a grounded metal box. And these standoffs are connected to ground on the board, so if you mount it this way, that will kind of automatically ground your metal enclosure. Yeah, so that's it. That's all you have to do. Your microphone is now complete. So you would plug this into your audio recording interface and turn phantom power on. And I guess you could stick your piezo disc to something. And that's it. You're ready to start recording. So I've also been testing this preamp against some other popular DIY contact mic preamp designs that I found on the internet. And I've been very pleased with the results and I'm in the process of making a video about that. So if you wanna see that, please subscribe to my channel and that video should hopefully be out in a week or so. But anyway, I guess that's all I've got to say about that for now. So as usual, thank you so much for watching and I guess I'll see you next time. Bye.